Okay, this video clip offers us two more different ways of approaching a tracking problem. I'll just scan through this real quick. You'll notice here that the hair on the model goes over the sunglasses here, which is a problem that needs to be addressed in half of this, but on the other side, we have a nice clear method of being able to track those pieces of tape and basically remove them so that we can key the sunglass lens. I'm just going to move to the end here and set a play range out and then go back to the beginning. Use the pen tool, zoom in a little bit and for this one I'm just going to click on the points on the edges of the tape just like that. I'm not really being too careful and I'll just go ahead and apply attract points and just go ahead and analyze. You'll notice that Motion is doing really an outstanding job of tracking these points. I'll go ahead and let this finish. If you have a fast Mac, this doesn't really take up much time. Okay, we're done. I'm going to click on the shape, click on the eyedropper, and pick a color. Then I'll just go ahead and feather this some. I'll turn off the overlays and play it. Okay, we got a little overhang there. I don't think we'll even notice it that much. Yeah, we might. Actually, I'll take a little bit of the feather down. Much better. Okay. The other side. The other side is a problem because of the hair. So, Really the easiest thing to do is start with the pen tool, find a good mark. I'll go with that point right there. Type return. I'm only going to track one point on this side. Go into shape, track points, analyze. But do notice that I started at the beginning of this clip again. If I turn on the overlays, we'll get to watch the progress. Excellent track. I'll bring her back to the beginning. Take our Bezier pen tool again. And I'm going to Now I'm adding a few extra points in here and that will become clear why later. I'll do that one. Okay. Now I will just go ahead and add a motion tracking match move. And I'll add the track points or the one point I tracked to the source here. Play that. Okay, now we have to fix it, which is oddly not really that big a deal, and 
this particular clip has a uh, extra bonus and you'll see in a few minutes. So I'm going to click on the auto record button and play through. I'll need my overlays. Okay. And I'm just going to reshape this right here. Like that. Play. Take a little more off. Okay. Gotta watch out for these little pop up things here. You can't grab these points if they're in the way. Now, if I'm over the hair right now, it doesn't really matter that much. I just need to cover the tape marks. That's going to peek out there. Looking pretty good. Pull this back down. Pull these in. That didn't take too long. Go ahead and go into the shape. Click the eyedropper tool. Oh, we got a problem right there. Hang on. Just drag this out like that. We're still in the record mode here, so it's fine. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay, let's colorize this. Turn off overlays and take a look. Okay. We got to turn off the record button and clear that. All right. Now, if we change the blend mode of this shape to darken, it will color the tape because they are lighter than the shape but not color the hair which is darker than the shape. So let's take a look at how that looks. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge when we get into the keyer. But we'll deal with it when we get into the keyer. So far this is looking pretty good. Not bad. Alright, so now we have our tracked shapes. I'm going to select all of our shapes and our video and group them. Okay. And just give it a name and add the keyer. Make sure you have your overlays turned on and sample this color. I am not going to go into a whole lot of detail about getting a good key out of this. At this point, uh, it's a lot of work. It'll take a lot of time. We'll just go ahead and do that. But what I want to show you is the key are added a lot and plus the green screen. So it's taking out the green. I want the green back in. So I'm going to switch this to manual. I'm going to use the controls here and bring this back around to that blue shade. I'm going to pull this around and it's going to focus this particular key on this particular blue. And you can use the matte tools uh, to fill this up a little bit. I want to put a little bit of erosion on there to smooth these kind of jagged edges. Maybe 
go ahead and uh, either shrink or expand this, depending on how you want to do this. See, part of the problem was is that the original blue is actually cutouts and then taped to the lens or glued to the lens. And so you got like these little jagged edges that the keyer picks up. I'm not going to worry about it. We're zoomed in and I'm going to zoom out. One more thing I need to add to this is another group. I'm going to go into my library and get a picture for this. Okay. Now I'm going to add yet another group, add the picture again, drag it to the bottom. Hold down the Option key and drag this out. Like that, so that the picture is going to fill up the whole screen. And to this group up here, I'm going to add another keyer. Now I want this to look like it's facing around the other ways. I can do either one. I'm just going to do the one in the back here. And I'm going to flip it around. So I'll just go into the scale. Type a minus for the X scale. Now with a little bit more work on the keyers, you can make this look a little better. This is a particularly difficult piece. It's uh, good to practice on. Uh, it's available at hollywoodcamerawork.us and if you can key this well, you've got your keying chops down. I just want to show you how to use tracking tape on the lenses to key out the lenses. might give you an idea for something to do for your own projects. And so every tracking job is a little different. I hope you found this useful and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you.